here back, folks. Another edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider. This is actually a part two because we spent the entire episode talking football recruiting, big recruiting weekend coming up with five star, uh, all American, two sports star, uh, Nicholas Harbor coming to town. Uh, but I wanted to dedicate a lot of attention to basketball because the number one player in the country tweeted here recently that a decision is coming soon, right? And so to talk about that and all other things and a lot more talk when it comes to Michigan basketball recruiting is the national director for 24-7 sports of the basketball side, Eric Bossi. Eric, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing great, man. Glad to catch up with you, get you back on the podcast here. And so I teased it there in the intro, Isaiah Collier, not just the number one point guard in the country, but the number one player in the country. Michigan, one of the finalists for him. And he said a decision is coming soon. So I'm curious, uh, you know, what have the rumblings been around yeah. that recruitment of late? Um, I think it would be more correct to say that a date for his decision is coming soon versus a decision is coming soon. Ah, okay. I don't anticipate a decision in the near future. Um, I think what he's going to do is lock in like a target date for for a decision but i would expect now this can always change but based on what i've heard most recently that it'll probably be until at least after the turn of the calendar year into 2023 before isaiah has a decision um i think he'd like to maybe set a, a time frame to to get himself moving towards it but it would be a little bit of a surprise right now if, for instance he were to say that sign early so the finalists, uh, he established those long ago. You have uh, SC, UCLA, you have Cincinnati, you have Alabama, you have Michigan. But for for months, the school that people have been talking about as maybe having uh, an edge here is SC. Is that still the talk? Is is that legit in your eyes? I think it's South, uh, South Southern California, Southern California, USC, and Cincinnati's picking up steam. Again, you know, they were the team that probably through much of the winter and much of the spring was kind of thought of as the team to beat in that one. And we're talking about there's potential with a package deal with his high school teammate, Arrington Page, who I think Cincinnati is also doing well with. So I would say most talk is centered around USC and Cincinnati as of right now. Um, Michigan probably slides in there just after those guys in the most recent talk with UCLA kind of being behind, and I think Alabama is pretty much totally out at this point. Mm -hmm. How legit is the uh, is the answer? Because Aaron to Page, he has he has other members of his top five. I mean, or of his finalists, right? Or is it just SC and Cincinnati for him? Where do things stand with him? Right yeah, now? yeah, I think SC and Cincinnati. Um, Indiana is definitely in pretty deep with him and a legitimate option, and I think he's much closer to making a decision than Isaiah is. I, I would anticipate. Arrington is someone, honestly, I, I kind of thought he might have decided by now. He's taken his visits. He's He knows what he wants. He's also been in Missouri, um, some other places. So I think he decides first. And while landing, you know how package deals go. Right. They don't happen as often as they say they're going to. Now, would, if you were USC or Cincinnati and you landed Arrington Page, it certainly wouldn't hurt your cause. And it would certainly be a benefit to you in trying to get Isaiah Collier. But I don't think it's any kind of deal breaker. What what were the things that or what are the things that sort of has those schools trending? I know when I first heard about SC and kind of looking into it, you know, I was hearing that, you know, his brother lives out there, uh, you know, that's a, and they're really close and that could that could bring them closer. Of course, you know, the, the program, too. But that was kind of and yeah. then and then the Arrington page thing, package deal thing sort of played into that, too. But what are you sort of hearing about why those two schools are, are trending the most right now? You've got that. You've got his brother, and also mom is from Los Angeles. And so there's there's a lot of family ties back there and wanting to get home and things like that. And, you know, I think Isaiah is a kid who hasn't really been enamored with the whole wanting to go to like a traditional blue blood type thing. He's kind of done things on his own. You know, he, he, he stayed at his same high school. He hasn't transferred when he's at all these big national programs come calling. You know, he stayed true to skill factory summer program and didn't go bouncing around. So 
he's definitely a, a march to his own drummer kind of guy. And I think he just sees situations where there's still clearly high level programs, right? Mm -hmm. Where he could go in and there's not going to be any question about whether or not the ball is going to be in his hands when he gets there. And then with Cincinnati, you've got, that's just a case where I think they're kind of in early. Um, they've built a tremendous relationship and has some pretty, one of their assistants has some pretty deep ties into the Atlanta area. So there's kind of where you're going on that. And yeah, that's, that's, that's the new world. And I think moving to the Big 12 probably helps Cincinnati quite a bit. So there's no lack of yeah. being in that power conference type deal. So, you know, I, I think we've seen some kids have found some success with going to power conference schools where they can be the man, but not necessarily a program that's been thought of as a blue blood. But also they were big guys, but I'm, I'm quite sure USC is selling, hey, look, where Isaiah Mobley got – drafted you know or evan mobley geez not isaiah mm -hmm. confusing my mobley's you know look where onyeko kongu got drafted after a short period of time we can get guys drafted highly out of here and that that, that speaks to kids so another kid that at least when you talk about michigan who they were uh in pretty good shape with uh another kid that they were high with. And now it seems like you're starting to hear about other schools, Papa Conte. So what are you hearing about Pop, Papa, the big man from South Kent? Yeah, of course with Papa, everybody saw Memphis go out and hire Andy Borman, who runs the New York Rens, who Papa played with. So there was a, a, a snap reaction of, oh, you know, the, the Memphis is going to get any New York Rens kid they want. And certainly it doesn't hurt. And certainly Memphis is going to be in the mix with Papa, but Maryland has gotten into that mix a little bit more. And I definitely wouldn't count Michigan out on this one yet. I was actually doing some digging around on it yesterday. And, and from what I have heard and been told, Michigan is still very much a factor with Papa and very much in the mix. And there's still some, some wiggle room on that one for what he's going to do. Yeah. You know, it, it, one time it seemed like it was, uh, it was really Michigan and Maryland in a, in a tug of war, do you, how legit, because now you're starting to hear people say, oh, well, Memphis is the team to beat. Do you, do you buy that talk that Memphis is the team to beat now? I don't know if I would necessarily say the team to beat, but surely when you've got a relationship like that, it, it is something that you have to take notice of. But, you know, there are other people who are involved in Papa Conte's life and it's not just an Andy Borman decision. You know, Andy Borman is certainly a big factor and someone that he's got a great relationship with. But, you know, there's, you know, his his prep school coach, Rafael Chilius, is, is very involved. You know, he's got other people that are going to be involved in the process. So certainly Andy Borman gives Memphis a really good shot and you don't want to dismiss that relationship there. And also you don't want to dismiss, you know, Penny has been able to get dudes too. You know, like uh -huh. he, he's, he's got some cachet with guys. You know, people can argue about the results however much they want but he certainly is a formidable foe or guy on the recruiting trail but i don't think that that one's quite as much of a done deal as some are making out to be gotcha all right so one that michigan was an early adopter on and his recruitment has gone through the roof uh over the course of the last five six months is zayden high it just seems he's taking his official to michigan what are you hearing about zayden so zayden i really think it's coming down to three schools with him I think it's Michigan is in the mix. He's got his visit to North Carolina coming up, I believe. Is it this weekend, maybe? He's going there either this week or next weekend. He has his North Carolina. North Carolina is, is very much in the mix. And I think Villanova would probably be the third school. He's been there as well. Uh, you know, he's talked about Texas a little bit, but I really don't see him making a return to his home state right now. I would say Michigan, North Carolina, Villanova are kind of the three in – I think this visit with North Carolina is going to be a really, really important weekend in the, in the recruitment of Zayden High. So one of the things I remember when North Carolina offered, because they were a little after some of the other schools, and his dad was really kind of talking about uh, the relationships and, that they had formed already to that point in the recruitment and that, you know, they were just starting to kind of forge that with, with Carolina do you do you sense that they've sort of made up a lot of ground in that department already? Or is this this visit going to really tell the tale as far as that's concerned? Yeah, they've certainly been been trying to do so. They were out there full staff the very first day of the evaluation period. North Carolina was. They 
were out a few days later. They each time they did that, they also stopped by in Texas to see his family, along with going out to Arizona to see Zayden. So they've certainly done it. And, you know, I, I would say they're the reason I don't want Michigan fans to get mad at anything. I'm like building North Carolina's case here, but they did have Gigi Jackson, who was at that time the number one player in the country in the class of 2023, committed to play the exact same position. And obviously you saw what happened with them and him deciding to enroll early and go to go to South Carolina. And, you know, all of a sudden North Carolina finds themselves back out in the mix. But certainly, you know, kids and families have a long memory sometimes and they can say, oh, yeah, that's cool. You know, we, we get that you had that other guy, but there's always still a little bit of a, yeah, you, you, you didn't really want me until that guy was gone. You know, right. these guys, and I know if I was – Michigan or if I was Villanova I would be driving it home like hey man we wanted you before all that other stuff right. we wanted you no matter who was coming and 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 let's 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 remember that we had you in in June you know we didn't have to wait around for other schools to offer you we jumped right in and oh by the way you know the position you're trying to reach in the NBA our head guy you know he he played it for 17 18 years at a pretty high level so that's a pretty good pitch too yeah, it is. It is. But clearly, Michigan not uh, putting all their eggs in that basket or, or the Papa basket. Uh, they are actively sort of trying to cast a wider net. And one guy they just offered, um, uh, I don't know where his where things stand in his recruitment. We're still uh, catching up with, with all of that. But just his game. Bay and Dongo, can you, what, yeah. can you tell us about him? Bay is an intriguing prospect. He is a guy that was in our top 150 for a little while and has the talent to play at a high major, to play at the big 10 level and the talent to be a national ranked player. The key for him is, uh, you know, he's, he's a teenage kid. There's some, there's some immaturity issues that have surfaced at times, but as a player, he's, he's six, nine ish. He's pretty rugged, pretty athletic. He gets on the glass. He certainly fits the profile of a big 10 style, big guy who can, who can handle some some punishment in the paint and dish out some of his own. His recruitment, as you said, it has been a little quiet. That's one we, we saw the Michigan offer too. And now we've been trying to kind of scramble to, to find what's going on because he had kind of fallen under the radar a little bit because he wasn't quite as visible during the summer and things like that. But he's one of those guys that with the right situation and the right mindset, if you bring him in, he could turn out to be a pretty good player a couple down years down the road. Like this isn't, you see some offers and you go, oh, wow, reach. This guy's not ranked. No one's recruiting him. What's happening? Um, he's not a reach. Um, is he a guy that's going to come in and set the world on fire as a freshman? Probably not likely, but he's not a reach either. He's a legitimate high major prospect who could come in and be a rotational role player early on and then develop into something a little bit more down the road if he gets his mindset right. Yeah, we could talk about a, a score of guys. Uh, but I, I, I need to switch gears and go to 24 and focus on a couple of guys that made it to campus recently. Starting off with the with the big fella from Sunrise Christian, John Bowl. How prominently do you think Michigan figures into that equation? You know, I, I've spoken with his with his legal guardian, who is also an assistant coach at uh, at Evansville. And I think they like what they have have to offer there. Finding a place that's known for developing big guys and has the place. The, the, the structure in place to develop a big guy is going to be a huge priority with John because he's seven foot one, maybe even seven foot two. He can run, he's got energy, great personality, but he needs some work with his footwork, with his skills. So places that can really show him a map for that are going to be prioritized. Um, you know, Michigan's not necessarily too far away from Evansville. So it's, it's, it's a Midwest place. I think they've positioned themselves pretty well early. I, I believe he's taken a, an official visit to Missouri this weekend and is going to do a few more. And he's not a guy that's anywhere near deciding yet, but he's a guy who's right in the wheelhouse of someone that I think Michigan is built to be in with for the long run. All right. And then the young man who made it to campus last week, uh, you know, backcourt, trying to get a uh, uh, get in early or get in at this stage with Travis Perry. What about, I mean, you see a kid from Kentucky who has a Kentucky offer. You just assume Kentucky, right? right? But is, is what are you thinking about that recruitment right now? Everybody assumes Kentucky and I'm sure the kid, I don't think there's any doubts that behind the scenes, people know like 
he has grown up Kentucky fan. Kids in Kentucky grew up Kentucky fans. So, and if he's not a Kentucky fan, he's a Louisville fan, more than likely. Or he likes both. You know, there are there are some there are some of those strange breeds. But the fact that he hasn't committed yet, I think says that he understands that Kentucky doesn't necessarily play the right style for for, for young Mr. Perry. And mm. there's no doubt that he could develop into a good player for them and eventually fit. But I think he's a kid who is struggling with the do I want to go to a place that I, I grew up rooting for and it's every kid in my state's dream? And I mean, imagine the NIL, NIL possibilities. Right. If, if, if you, you know, right. like, like if that kid commits to Kentucky, him and him and Reed Shepard should be doing Shepard and Perry basketball camps every weekend for the next however many years. Right. And just filling those things up with little kids who, who want to be like them. Um, but it's pretty clear that they're they're being very very sincere about their efforts to go out and look at other programs and see what else is out there. And you know, would it be a surprise if he ultimately ends up at Kentucky? No, no one's going to be shocked by that. But I do think that the kid and his family realize that hey, while Kentucky may be a dream or, or Louisville may be a dream, we need to go out and look at these other places because we need to do we need to do a little cost benefit analysis here, right? Like. We need to go up on the whiteboard, the pros and the cons, and what is most important to me really? Is it being a part of one of those home state schools because that's what you grew up wanting to do? Or is it picking the place that is the best fit for you and runs the best style for you? And that's going to be a hard decision for him down the road. All right. So uh, Caleb Williams, I mean, Michigan, very active in the DMV. You know, Hunter Dickinson, Terrence Williams, Doug McDaniel. I mean, they're, they're doing work. Juwan obviously played there. Yeah. Uh, for the then bullets for a while, so he they have profile in that area, and uh, they are pushing hard for for Caleb Williams, uh, planning to take a visit. So, what about Caleb? What about his recruitment? What about his game? Tell us about his game too. Okay, yeah. Not only do they have profile in DC, they have profile with team takeover. Right? There's, right. there's a common theme that these kids are all coming out of that same program. So clearly, they're going to be right there in the mix, and there's they're going to have a really strong shot with him. Uh, Caleb is interesting. I would say he's, he's a combo forward type. Um, is he a four? Is he a three? I don't really know. It depends how you want to play him. He's a cerebral player. He's a tough player. He's part of, uh, the DMV and team takeover that 2024 class is pretty loaded in that area. We've got several players in, in our 2024 national rankings from right in there that we're still kind of sort out as we get to know them a little bit more, but you know, he's – I don't want to compare him to Terrence Williams because I don't think he's the, quite the same as uh, Terrence Williams. You know, he's got a little bit of uh, – people remember Josh Reeves, another DMV kid at Penn State. He's got a little bit of him to his game. There's some elements of Josh Hart, but he's not quite as much of a wing as those guys. But those guys, to me, stuck out because they were smart, they were versatile, and they had some toughness. And, and that's what sticks out with, with Caleb. I mean, any kid who goes to Sidwell Friends – you're talking about an extremely sharp individual, an analytical guy, someone who takes the classroom very seriously. So those are guys that the whole Michigan experience, because, you know, it's not just totally about NIL or playing time for every kid anymore. Mm -hmm. He's the type of kid that the whole Michigan academic, cultural, um, everything that they've got about it in, in that ecosystem up there in Ann Arbor and around the basketball program He's the kind of kid who's definitely going to be in, intrigued by that and that I think they could score some really big early points with. But, of course, you know, he's going to look at Virginia. He's going to look at Maryland. He's going to look at Georgetown. I would expect Villanova to be in the mix. You know, the, the, the usual suspects with those kids in that area. And it used to be you kind of had to write off Maryland with these guys. But Kevin Willard's proven he can get some of these guys now. So, okay. It's 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 going to be interesting. But it's it's just so young. It's it's I don't know what to make of these junior visits anymore because is it just dudes taking visits because they want to take visits and they know that they can take another five next year and they want to go see some fun football games and things like that or are they like real serious? But it doesn't hurt to set a high bar early. Mm -hmm. All right. So last one for you. Might as well talk some in our time left about the kid coming to campus this weekend for his official that he's committed to Michigan already. And Christian Anderson, is it from an analyst perspective, is it just about size right now when you talk about 
where his his ranking is or what do you think about his game and what's his upside? Christian Anderson is clearly a very skilled young man. He can really shoot the ball. Size is definitely a big question mark. And the other thing is we just haven't gotten to see him in person as much as we've been able to see some other guys. You know, it's cool to watch some of the FIBA stuff online. And clearly he was doing some nice things over there, but that doesn't change over seeing him in person and seeing how well there's a difference between watching video and, and seeing how he does when everything's being run for him to get open shots versus, okay, what happens in real live action when there's some impediments to getting those open shots and how can he do things? Cause the handling, the shooting, that stuff, it, it's all there. And my gosh, if you look at him, he still looks like he's 12, right? And he's gangly arms and legs. So while he's little, he's little, but looks like he could get a lot, a lot bigger. Um, you know, for instance, there's a kid in the class of 2023 who I really like named Cameron Carr, who's really starting to take off now. His father, Chris Carr, played in the NBA for a while. Very similar to Christian in that just kept waiting for him, waiting for it, waiting for it. Well, now here we've come. Cameron Carr's gone from... 5'11", six foot tall to six to six four in the course of nine months. And now we're talking about a guy that I was in at Link Academy to see that in my mind is going to go from unranked to, you know, top 50, maybe top 75 in the country. If he does what I think he's going to do this summer. So, or this winter. So Christian, man, it's just a matter of, okay, we think he's going to grow. So we got to keep that in mind of where his he dad can is like six, six, six or something like that's, that. That's the thing yeah. about it is his yeah. dad is six, six. And the under and and what we've been told is dad had a late grace growth spurt too. So and he still looks young. He's not one of those kids who, while he's a high school junior, you wouldn't question him if he came in to buy a beer from you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. like he, he's got all those markers, but still, you can't just assume that growth. What you can do is you do your best to evaluate where they are now, but also know that like, hey, look, if this kid hits a three or four inch growth spurt. We're talking about a top 25 to top 50 player in the country. And as it is, he's still a top 100 player and a guy that's really good, but you know, he's a scrawny, a scrawny kid coming to the big 10. It's going to, it's going to take a little while for him to adjust, but he's really good player. And he's someone that we're definitely got our eye on as somebody that like, Hey, we need to keep him in this range because he's getting some stuff done. And let's let's remember how important the skill factor is and keep in mind that man if this growth spurt does hit we don't want to have been too far out in left field and having written him off or anything like that but i do think he's going to be a really good player yeah he can really shoot it we'll get an eye on how much he's because they say he's he's uh sprouted a couple of inches so we'll get yeah. our first look at that this week yeah, and, that, and that's you know we always get told oh man he's grown three inches since the last time you, you've seen him you know I, i'm sure sam you, how many times is, have we heard that over the years and then seeing the kid and been like, yeah, no, you just you just listed him at 6'9 instead of listing him at 6'6. Six, six. That doesn't mean he actually grew. But, you know, if he's grown a couple inches already, that's, that's that's you know, you get that kid anywhere above six foot, you know, he's probably 5'9", five, 5'10 five, last time I saw him, which also, too, he's at the one position, I think, where you can really get away with being little, and that's at the point, if you've got the quickness and the skill to overcome that. And he certainly got some of that stuff. It's more of a strength factor for me than it is even a height factor, you know, bulking up and showing that he can carry bulk without losing what makes him so good is more important to me than him stretching out. Now, if he stretches out and does all that, then, you know, holy cow, Michigan is going to look so smart and so forward thinking for having gotten this done so early. Well, Eric, it is, I, I could keep you for an hour, but I promised you it would only be 20 minutes. So, so we'll, we'll stop right there and have you back another time especially as some of these decisions uh seem like they're they're getting closer and and as michigan's board expands it's very clear uh, when you look at the indongo uh, offer that they are looking to expand their board at, cer at certain positions so we'll keep an eye on that yeah. as well and also i'm sure you've gone over this with 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 your with your followers and your readers and your loyal fan base there at michigan insider we're also talking about a michigan roster like some of these other rosters around the country where they don't really know who's going to be back and how much they're going to have. And, you know, obviously you make room for Isaiah Collier, no matter what, no matter who comes back, like there's a spot for that guy. But some of these other guys, like you have to weigh once the winter starts happening, do we really want to go after another high school guy? Do we need a high school guy or do we just, 
hang out and get somebody out of the portal because there will be players. And it's, it's, you know, while we've still got these kids with extra COVID years and with NIL and the amount of money some of these kids can make by coming back, it's really become a tough decision. And I think Michigan is one of the schools that's in one of the most unique positions from that in terms of they could potentially have everyone back. Everyone, right. Yeah. So that, 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 that's a weird thing to be for a coach because you want to be out there getting stuff done, but also like, you know, just how urgent you have to be, you know, you really don't have to reach on anybody just yet. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see it unfold for them over these next, you know, not just a couple of months leading up to early signing day, but through the winter and getting a feel for, okay, who's going to be back. What do we need to find now? Yeah. Great stuff, Eric. Appreciate your time, man. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, folks, that'll do it for this edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider. If you like this podcast, be sure to rate it. Be sure to tell all your friends about it. They can find it wherever they get their podcasts, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, you name it. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like it. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And you can always find us over on the MichiganInsider.com. One dollar gets you in your first month. You cannot beat the value, the bang for your buck. When you become a full-paying member, you also get in on Paramount+. Plus. So hope to see you over there. Thanks for watching another edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider.